So generally what you'll hear when people talk about bacteria is they'll say bacteria do not have a cytoskeleton, okay? And they'll also say bacteria don't have any um, membrane-bound organelles or, or any sort of, you know, um, complex structures within the cell, all right? But that's not totally true, okay? Um, yes, bacteria cells, um, bacteria cytoskeletons don't have actin, microfilaments, or microtubules, but they do have this primitive cytoskeleton, okay, and it consists of a couple of different pieces um, depending on the type of bacteria you have. And the most common, and that's almost common to all bacteria, is this, it's called FTSC, we call it FTSC, it's F-T-S-C, okay, and it's found in almost all bacteria, it's um, a key separ septation protein, so the septum is what forms during binary fission when you're separating the two cells, okay, when you're, when you're forming two daughter cells. And it occurs in spherical cells, and it's a constriction ring, okay, that forms around the equator. And you can think about this really quickly um, about binary fission. Um, formation of the constriction ring is extremely important. How else would you separate the um, two bacteria or, or the two individual cells once the chromosomes are replicated and the cells enlarged and whatnot? So FTC is one of these... Um, so protein like filaments okay sort of you know a lot of them ha have a relationship to you know actin or microtubules or microfilaments in some way um, but they're a primitive form okay they're just not as complex so the other one here is MREB okay MREB it forms um, they, they have a coil it forms a coil inside of rod shaped cells so it forms a coil inside of rod shaped cells you'll see this I guess in um, bacilli, okay, and uh, it, it has a relationship to eukaryotic, uh, eukaryotic um, actins, okay, so it has a relationship to actin. It doesn't have actin, but it has, a, it has some distant relationship, okay, there's some similarities there. And there's also this other one called CRES, and that's uh, crescentin, and it forms a polymer along the side of, cre of um, crescent-shaped bacteria, okay, so it's a, it kind of gives the crescent-shaped bacteria its crescent shape. All right, and that and that's again why it's considered part of this sort of skeleton by um, bacteria cytoskeleton. So there are these specialized structures. I just kind of want to point that out. It's an interesting fact. People will tell you that you know in the in the in the large general sense, yes, bacteria do not have a cytoskeleton. But there are certain things that are involved that are cytoskeleton-like, okay, or have some some primitive function similar to a cytoskeleton. So the next thing I want to talk about is these thalcoids and uh, carboxysomes, which um, you might remember from plant physiology or something else you took, that these are involved in photosynthesis and carbon fixation, respectively. Okay, and the other thing people say, again, is that there's no specialized structures in bacteria. But I'm here to kind of point out that there are some specialized structures that you can find, okay? And um, two of those specialized structures are, are these thalcoids and um, carboxysomes. And they conduct photosynthesis. They're involved in photosynthesis and carbon fixation. Um, so the specialized structures consisting of extensively folded intracellular membranes. Okay, that's what a thalcoid is, it, and you've probably seen pictures of them several times. Um, if not, please Google them, um, and I'm sure you'll find a great picture and it will kind of show what I'm talking about me with this extensively folded inner membrane. Okay, this extensively folded um, uh, stacked membrane structures. So Carboxysomes are a little different. They're polyhedral protein covered um, bodies packed with the enzyme Rubisco. Okay, and Rubisco is used in CO2 fixation. And a lot of these things are found in cyanobacteria, which is not a big surprise because they are photosynthetic bacteria. Okay, and they were very instrumental in creating the oxygen rich atmosphere we enjoy today. So you do have these thalcoids, carboxysomes, and also gas vesicles. Okay, we have these gas vesicles, and you might be wondering why we why gas vesicles are considered kind of a specialized structure. Well, they play a sort of important role for some of these photosynthetic aquatic organisms. Um, you know, you want to increase your buoyancy, and the reason you want to increase your buoyancy is because you want to keep the bacteria high enough in the water where they can still get light from the sun, okay, especially if you're photosynthetic. If you're photosynthetic, you need the light in order to survive, in order to produce some... Um, you know, carbohydrates and store and uh, store energy as ATP. Um, so without that, you'd be in trouble. So this is kind of an important important thing as well. And you also have these magnetosomes, okay, and they are membrane-bound crystals of magnetic mineral uh, magnate, Fe3O4, okay. Um, 
And basically what that is, is there's certain bacteria that have this sort of magnetic property that allows them to orient themselves in reference to the Earth's magnetic field. And it helps them to kind of distinguish where they're going. It's sort of like a navigational, um, it's sort of like a navigational um, structure that helps like a sort of like a compass basically okay helps the bacteria navigate through and swim to the necessary locations okay and another thing to point out is that there's also energy storage granules okay granules just the storage vesicles they have you know some sort of um material in them that can be used for energy purposes and such uh but anyway they're php and pha okay or two of them